Welcome to Anecdotes for Success with Matt and Paul. Storytelling is an art form, emphasizing the value and learning that is created through personal experience. Our purpose is to share these stories and experiences with the listener. Everyone has a powerful testimony. Let's use them to level up to our best life with truth, meaning, trade-offs, and perspective. Big shout out to Isaac Mather for the new podcast intro. You can check Isaac's music out on all socials or directly at IsaacMatherMusic.com. Let's let's get started. Awesome. Episode 115, season four. We have Daniela Perini from Illinois, uh, senior treasury analyst. Did I say that <laughs> yeah. officially? Yes, that, you got it. <laughs> I have a feeling as the conversation goes on tonight that it's it's the other stuff I've heard about you that excites me. I, I'm not saying you're not successful in what you're no, doing. No, no, no. I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> yeah. But but as we get going now, uh, what we tell all our guests, just start wherever you want to start. Tell us a little about yourself. Usually Matt jumps in first before me. Just warning you. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, you're but go nice. ahead. Get started. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Yeah. My name is Daniela Perini. Um, I live in Illinois in the suburbs of Chicago. Um, I've grown up here my whole life and really I have been an athlete my whole life. I think that's something that really attributes to the success that I've had in my personal professional career um, and something that I continue to work on um, throughout the course of the years. I feel like Um, I wasn't a college athlete necessarily, but growing up, I was an athlete, um, three sports all year round doing something. Um, I give kudos to my parents to taking me to all those practices and also keeping me involved in everything too. Um, but yeah, so I, I went to Indiana university for college. I studied, um, finance and business analytics. And while I was at school there, I was also, um, I don't know if anybody has heard of the little 500 bike ride or bike race, um, it is an Indian university specific ride that it's like a big event that people come in from all over Indiana and all over the U S to come and watch. It's also a big party week. So I got to stop you. Was there a movie named after that? Yes. So that was, um, breaking away. I've seen that. Yes. Yep. Yes. And it's based on that ride, right? Yes. Yep. The men's okay. ride and the, the team was cutters the cutters yes yes yes. yep so yeah I was I represented my sorority in that and that's kind of how I you know I wasn't a college athlete but I kind of consider myself a college athlete because I trained all year round for it um I really enjoyed that but yeah I studied finance and business analytics I grew I interned for the company I currently work for going into my senior year and they offered me a job so my senior year I had a job lined up, which was great. <laughs> and then COVID hit and thankfully I still kept it. And that's where I'm at at this point. And that's how I met Allie, um, Paul's daughter. So that's how we got connected in this podcast. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit of my background. Uh, interesting. So, so you said, tell me what a senior treasury analyst does. I've yeah. not heard that term before. Yeah. So It varies company to company, but my focus is on our capital markets. So working with our debt and our banks to finance the company, um, put in place different programs to gain access to funds. And I also help with, you know, some of our cash operations, like wire payments, checks, um, There's also reconciliations day to day, but also forecasting our AR, um, our accounts receivables, um, our payables. And then I also help with our foreign exchange trading. So I do some of our hedging, um, whether it be our forecasted sales hedging or our balance sheet hedging. Um, Very interesting things. So offsetting, you know, some of the risks in the company. Yeah, I was just going to say, so you're trying to offset risk in, in many ways um, yeah, and, while yeah. having access to funds to grow <laughs> or to invest or whatever, whatever you're trying to do, I presume. Yeah, yeah. And along with that sort of risk, I also 
I recently have taken the lead on our insurance. So helping renew our insurance policies, like our general liability, our employer's liability, workers' comp, um, our directors and officers' liability. Yeah. There's a lot of different things that my job entails and things that I never thought I would I would do in finance, really. Where 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 do where do you go from like where's the pinnacle of of that type of is it a CFO type thing or <laughs> you know what what where do you want to go from here? Yeah yeah um you know I I don't know if I necessarily want to be a CFO but I know that I don't want to stay as an analyst I want to move up in my career I not very oh I'm not satisfied with being an average Joe, I would say. And that's no offense to anybody else, but I just, I want to keep growing. And, you know, this is just a skill set that other areas of finance, I didn't feel like gave me. And it's just very niche. Like treasury itself is very niche. Like what I just described to you is something that not a lot of people in finance ever touch. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy to get stuck in that role where like treasury is very, specific and you can bounce around companies going and implementing different treasury aspects. But um, I definitely want to go back to the financial planning and analysis, which that's what my background was in when I, before I got into this role a year ago. Interesting. Yeah. How, yeah. How'd you decide to get in this role or were you placed in that role? Was it a choice or? Um, well, funny because I, so I started off in a finance development program, which Allie is in right now and how right. I met her. Um, but I started off in an fp &A role, actually the exact one she's in. Um, and then I moved into another one, um, that was a little bit different my second year. Um, and then my third year, they placed me initially in another fp &A role. And it was like my final, my third and final year in the program. And I knew like a month in, I was like, I know this. I've done it for the past two years. My, The purpose of this program was to get me a well-rounded experience in finance. And I saw that there was an opening in treasury and I had had interest in it and wanted something different for my third year. So I was like, okay, I, I actually went to the CFO and I asked him if I could move roles. <laughs> And he was like, I had to convince him and he had to talk to some people to get me moved over. But then I, um, he moved me into that role and that's where I ended up staying because there was a senior analyst position open. So yeah, that was, it was definitely an interesting time. I would practice with my parents or like coworkers on how I would pitch it to the CFO on me, you know, moving roles, but it was a really good experience. Uh, from what I'm hearing, though, you're just a couple of years into all this and you've advocated for yourself. You've moved around. You're learning a ton and being diverse. I feel like mm -hmm. you can specialize later as you advance or move on or or do whatever you want to do. Thank you. Yeah, I I hope so. I, I mean, that's my plan. Really. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I, I was gonna, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. That's that was all. Yeah. No, I was I was going to I was going to ask you we talked a little bit about being an athlete and but like Paul and I talk about this all the time but because it's true or 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 at least um in many cases it is. I mean, how how did that that ath, you know, athlete background help you or 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 hurt you in 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 your pursuits? Yeah. Um I really think that one communication that was a huge piece of being an athlete communicating with your teammates your coaches your parents on when to be at practice all of that i think that is just all around in any aspect of business or in life it's the a big piece um that's helped me a lot in success you know keeping everyone in the loop on what i'm working on what i want to be involved in and again advocating for myself um I think that's been a big piece that I've taken away from athletics, um, as well as, you know, camaraderie, bringing people together. Um, that's something I love to do. And obviously, professionally, I enjoy working with my team, making sure that everyone is developing themselves. I want to be a leader um, and trying to work towards that and Again, that's another piece that came from athletics. 
being a leader. Um, I was a captain of a couple of teams. I was able to exercise that skill a lot. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed those pieces. Um, any cons from athletics? Yeah. I'm um, curious. I've uh, always wonder like what, what, yeah. cause Paul and I would talk about trade-offs all the time and everything in, everything in life is a trade-off. Every, mm -hmm. Everything's got a trade to it. And I'm not necessarily saying that there are cons because the trade-off to athletics is just the time you spend versus right. maybe studying or being with your friends, or I, I'm just making these things up. No. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but, you know, uh, one of the things I often wonder is, you know, what have, have, has the focus or the, the identity I'll call it of being an athlete, because most of us, when we were athletes, that was our identity, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the softball player, the basketball player, the whatever it happens to be. And mm -hmm. it, we, we all know how hard it is for people, especially when they move on from college, let's say, I mean, what, not many people are going pro and, and some of those, or, or from high school to college or whatever the case may be. It's like this first time we get this major identity shift that we have to deal with. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, sometimes that could be looked at as a con, right? All of a sudden now I have to, do I have to reinvent myself, you know, all the, all the things that people thought I was, that's all gone now, or all the things I mm -hmm. thought I was. So maybe it's not gone, but people right. aren't seeing it the same way. So I'm just curious if you've found, or, or, or maybe, maybe you're just, you know, always trying to be the leader or whatever and that causes friction. I, you know, I, I don't know, but I think it's an interesting yeah. topic. No. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with the identity shift. Um, I still feel like I, I try a lot of different things. I, everyone calls me not necessarily like, this isn't like a bragging thing, but it's more of like, I, I try everything where I'm like a jack of all trades in the sense that I just, I'm trying to still figure out what I enjoy doing the most. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, I still do a lot of athletic things. Like I still bike. I did a triathlon this past year. I, you know, I did, I did a bike ride across Ohio for four days. Um, just a lot of different things that I'm dabbling in. I, I bake sourdough bread in my free time. <laughs> I just, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out like that identity, I guess uh -huh. you could say, but maybe Jack of all trades is my identity. Identity. I don't know. <laughs> it's right. like, yeah, I, that's probably a con. I would agree with that. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's also like everything. It's also got its, uh, it's, it's upsides to it, but it's mm -hmm. something Paul and I, you know, I don't just talk, talk like this in, in, at our, on our podcast cast either. I talk like this, like all day, every day. This is, I'm just fascinated by trade-offs yeah. in particular. So, um, I, you know, I was just curious if you, you found any, cause we always associate almost always participating in athletes in athletics, being an athlete, Mm -hmm. as these wonderful life skills and, and, and qualities and people. And I agree with that a thousand percent, mm -hmm. but not everything can be great. Right. So I'm always like, what's the, you know, what's that trade off in it? And, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's your hype. People can get hyper competitive or, or, or whatever, but Paul, what do you think? You're, uh, you're, 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 you're in that boat. Yeah. Uh, well, I was going to start, I wanted to hear more about this, the cycling and the biking, because <laughs> I feel like everything you mentioned that you're just trying to do has, has probably made your work life feel easier. I, I think athletics, the transition, the pro of athletics mm -hmm. is, I feel like you, you feel like you have free, more free time when you're actually working a career because, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's a lot more downtime. You're not just pedaling away, pedaling away, pedaling away at work. So I want to go back to this little 500. Yeah. So is it, why is it called that? Um, well, I think the name comes from the Indy 500 and yeah, okay. Okay. So it's the same, same concept in a sense where we're, we're on bikes going around a track versus cars. <laughs> so that's where the little 500 comes from. And yeah, that's, and there's a men's race and a women's race. So that's where 500 comes from. 500 laps. So the men, no, it's not 500. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's deceiving. It's deceiving for sure than the name, but the men's race is 200 laps and the women's race is a hundred laps. And okay. it's a little over a quarter mile, you know, a standard track. Um, 
the the um track is around the soccer field in Indiana and the, gra- the it's not gravel it's actually made of lava cinders the track so it's like pellets like rubber pellets mm-hmm. and it's a relay race so i don't ride 100 laps on my own so you have people you have teams all along the the fences lined up and you're tag teaming people in so you're either bike exchanging where like you have you're on your bike riding around the track and you're coming into your gate and you have to jump off the bike for someone to jump on the bike while it's you know the momentum's going (laughs) or there's like an actual if your seat height is way different then you're going to actually do a um a one-to-one exchange so you have someone coming in from the on the bike and then you're going to like high five them to go run into the race yeah it's pretty crazy (laughs) are there are there a lot of people watching Oh yeah. It's, it's a very, it's like the biggest spectator event in Indiana uh, for IU, but um, yeah. And it's like all the fraternities and sororities come and watch and it's every, there's a party every day of the week for the fraternities and sororities. Um, And uh, professors know that it's that week. So they don't assign any homework or anything because it's like, they know people aren't even going to come to class. It's, it's pretty crazy, but the bikers are all like serious and like preparing for the race and everything. Cause it's like, we train all year for it. We'll ride on the roads in the fall. And then when come springtime, we're able to get on the track to practice on, you know, around the track. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. There's 32 teams that ride at once. So there's 32 bikers all clumped together. You can watch clips of it. It's pretty, it's crazy. How many how many uh, riders are on a team? Um, typically, I think the minimum is three, but you can have uh, up to four. Um, okay. Or, yeah, I I believe it's like three to four. But we most teams always have four. Um, you usually have someone start that's fast, can get you in a good place in the pack, and then you have the people and the endurance um, in the middle of the race, and then you have your fast people at the end. So. Everyone does about 25 laps, I would say. So it's pretty evenly split. So so the pressure of a career is nothing compared to that. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So so what what's let's move forward. A little. What what made you want to just ride your bike across Ohio? <laughs> That's a good question. It's not really the place that I would have picked, but no, it my best friend from college. Um she was my roommate senior year, but I had known her through my sorority and our families are very similar. We just have similar values and we've stayed in touch ever since. And um, she knew I was a biker. Her dad has been a big biker and has like a group of friends that he bikes with. And they have done this. It's called the Pan Ohio. Um, they've done this race. It's to raise money for the American Cancer Association. So raise money um, to be able to ride in the race and then you were were riding four days in a row um her dad did it for a few years and then finally roped us into it and her and I did it last year and you do I think like 85 miles the first day you do 92 on the second day 100 on the third day and then I think like 70 something on the fourth day and that's the finish so it's it's pretty crazy but you we trained a lot for it (laughs) What's a night like, like when you get done for the day? Is it just carving up? Is it just (laughs) sleeping? (laughs) Um, We, I think we would finish around like four o'clock. We would start really early. We'd start at like 630 in the morning, um, finish at like four. And then we would eat dinner and be in bed by like eight o'clock because we were exhausted at that point. Um, I probably didn't train as much as I should have. I think before that, the most I trained was 40 miles and it's actually, it was actually pretty dumb, but I, I lasted through the whole day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Adrenaline pumped in. Well, you, you've that, got to come out to New York. I've been trying to talk alien to the Buffalo Albany track along the Erie canal. Yeah. She told me you guys were trying, you were biking a little bit out there because yeah. she knew that I was biking. And so she sent me a picture of you and um, her sister and you all biking. 
or something. I, I they're novices. I need a pro <laughs> alongside me. They're they're novices. There you go. You know, no, I'll do it. I so I'm getting asked to do it again this year, and I would love to do it. It's just a lot of commitment. I feel like I put a lot of my plate in the past year. Um, so we'll see if I get around to doing that one. I want to do another triathlon this year, and I I did a triathlon and then that like June and then July last year which the training was very similar because I was already biking for the triathlon. And so I just added a few more miles um, after that. But it's, I feel like there's just a lot more going on that I will see how the commitment goes. <laughs> do, but, do, do you find all that training, does that transfer into your career? Yeah, I feel like when I have structure outside of work, I feel like I have more structure with work too, because there is a definitive like start and end time when I don't have like, because I know I need to go train. I know I need a few hours to go train. If I don't have something like that, then it's tougher to, you know, fin like finish work or I feel like, oh, I have so much time. I can just get things done later. I, pro I procrastinate more. It's just easier to do that when you don't have structure. And when I have a goal I'm working towards, whether it be in my career or outside of it with a triathlon or a race, I feel like, yeah, it's, it's tough to do when you don't have a goal. So. This, the structure, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It sounds like you're having fun though. I mean, I think most people think of structure as a bad word, a discipline right. word, <laughs> but you're structured to me. I mean, I mean, to you, structure just seems to be like something you're interested in, but but takes a lot of training and, and time. Exactly. Yeah. I whether it be me biking or baking, <laughs> because that's that's another thing. I'm I have people who buy bread from me and I'll be, you know, like, okay, they're coming to pick up the bread. I want to make sure that it's done by this time. I <laughs> there's just so many other things that I've thrown in the mix this past year that have given me some sort of structure. Um, and yeah, you could, you could hear it as a negative word, but structure to me is, <laughs> I enjoy it because it keeps me going. And it's an interesting word. I, and I, I hadn't given that a lot of thought until recently. My, my wife and I just had a baby. Um, so we have Congrats. a little, thank you, a four month old daughter. And, um, I've been doing a lot more reading and looking into, um, you know, babies than I used to. Right. So, mm -hmm. so one of the things I learned though, and Paul, I, I don't think we've ever talked about this, but I'm actually trying to use this in my businesses as well. One of the things I've read recently was about structure was in raising children is, you know, everyone thinks that their kids want freedom and they want to be free. And, right. and, and it's almost like, and I think of this as, as, as employees as well. Well, what they really want is structure. They want this structure around them that I, I just picture it as these like walls around us. And it really, I related to it because I'm like, that's what I want. So I want these walls around me. I want to know where my boundaries are. Right? I want to know when I have to stop working. I want to know when what I need to get done and what my deadlines are. I want, I want all that. I, I need to know that, you know, if I come home at 1 a.m. when I'm 14 years old, there's going to be some consequences, right? Like, I, you're supposed to be home at 10. That's mm -hmm. the structure. But then what we want is within those walls, within that structure, we want our freedom to get, and that's where we can get creative. And that's where we can, that's where we can invent and, 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 and do. And mm -hmm. as long as we're comfortable with that structure. And when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes perfect sense to me. And whether it's raising my, my daughter or, or leading our employees and those kinds of things. I'm trying to look at it through an, through through a lens of structure more mm -hmm. than I ever had. Like, hey, quit thinking that everyone wants freedom. What they want is that freedom within a structure, within those boundaries. So mm -hmm. I just, you know, it's apropos for our conversation here, but I thought it was spot on. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Me. Have you implemented anything um, structure-wise that you've seen success with? In terms of my child or my my businesses, well, that's a good that's a good um <laughs> probably business. We'll start business and then, yeah. and then she's child. not doing a whole lot of listening yet. Um, um, no, with the businesses, you know, one of the things that um 
I, we were just at a conference and my wife spoke at it and, and, and she didn't, she, she didn't comment on this, but we were discussing it as, cause she was, she was asked to give it a kind of a talk on training. And one of the things we own subway restaurants amongst other things, but the, the nice thing about a subway restaurant or a McDonald's or any franchise is they're literally handing you a book, right. And saying, here's the structure. Here's how you make tuna. Here's how you make, uh, uh, you know, here's how you cut tomatoes. Here's how you do virtually everything. But within there, that's where the genius is found. I, I found like within those walls. And I, I'm only thinking of in this way after I like I've owned subways 10 years. I wasn't thinking mm -hmm. like that years ago. But when we start, you know, we we empower our employees. We believe in that very, very much. You know, empowerment is very important, um, especially with the number of restaurants we have. We can't possibly be in in in, in there all the time and everyone right. or, you know, those types of things. So empowering people is important, but you've got to build the walls around that empowerment. Right. And then say within there, you know solve that problem creatively you know um you mm -hmm. know i i want you to deal with the customer i want you to handle their complaints let's say I, i'll say i'll say to you and then i'll go okay but you know here's what you can give away right a cookie or or you know based on these circumstances here's kind of the, the areas that are okay you know if it gets beyond that that's a different conversation but within these walls and all I want you to do is make that customer happy, right? We want that mm -hmm. customer back. We want them to feel satisfied. Well, when you do that, the creativity you see and, and the, the the type of solutions you find versus if someone complains, apologize, and then send them out or give them a cookie and send them out, you know, where you really just say, this is how you do it. There's no, there's no time to get creative, right? There's no, there's, you know, there, there, now you've, you're just giving them a task, I, I think. So yeah. you don't get you don't get some of those kinds of things. And and Paul, mm -hmm. your classroom is a great example. You talk about talk about an area to get creative, right? I mean, you, you invented that course in in a sense. I mean, thanks to me, it's actually popular. Yeah. But um, you you had you had an opportunity to, to invent it. You probably had the walls you had to stay in within somewhat, and then you could go do the rest. Kind of. Da Danielle, do you, do you have any idea what type of class I teach? Has Allie ever told you? Yeah, she gave me a little bit of an overview, but I want to hear it from you. So, you know, I was I, I was in finance and then I, I quit my job when I was younger, went back to school. And when I was 25, I became a high school teacher and coach. And then nine years ago, I had the opportunity to work at a vocational school and it's an honors academy. I go around to eight districts and I recruit kids when they're in 11th grade. And they apply to my class and I take the top 30 kids and it's called innovation, leadership and business. And they get 19 college credits, you know, public speaking, professionalism, personal finance, English. And we we have the boundary of the school. But what I found out the last two years is we really don't even have the boundary of the school because they drive we go wherever we want to go and we I just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And as long as the kids apply and have fun and go back and give great feedback back to their districts, I'm finding I can change my structure. Like my stru my structure just expands. I still have the structure. The structure yeah. is the credits and the the marketing and finance book. But mm -hmm. I wish I wish every senior in America had this type of structure because there's yeah. so much freedom there's days i mean in technically on thursdays when they go out on their rotations i don't technically know if they're there so there's freedom but but we have enough structure the rest of the week i'm pretty sure and then what they write about and you know in their their journals and whatnot i i know they're there but i i guess i don't you know so uh I love what you guys are all saying that the structure yeah. is a good thing. And there really is. I mean, no one's really completely free when it comes to taxes and government and <laughs> rules and law. Right. But, but if you can expand that structure where it just doesn't impact every single second of your life with like a thumb on you, mm -hmm. you have so much freedom as long as you can identify what your structure is. So that's the end of my rant, but that's what I do. And, uh, yeah, how, how, awesome. How much structure do you have at 
work? Like, do you have a lot of freedom at work? I know you have like a, a, a hybrid model. Yeah. Yeah. We are in the office on, uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So Tuesday through Thursday, um, home on Mondays and what Mondays and Fridays. Um, my team is always in the office Tuesday through Thursday. And there is, there are a lot of people that don't do that. Um, really at work, it's, you're supposed to be in three days a week. Um, I feel like a lot of companies are doing that, but it's like, it's the managers, like maybe they'll do it two days and it's, it's fine. I actually really enjoy being in the office three days a week. Cause I feel like I'm way more productive and there's structure to my week. I know what to expect. Um, and for my actual work, I feel like lately I'm being pushed into more of a, a managerial track. So I am given more freedom with my time, I would say to help almost like project manage in a sense with insurance. Um, I work with someone on my team to help with day-to-day -day questions or renewal applications for insurance policies. And I'm not necessarily doing the actual insurance policy applications, but I'm helping make sure, you know, the right people are in contact or um, that things are on time and sort of that sort of stuff. But it's definitely changed from where I was a year ago. Um, you know, I'm, I felt like I was doing a lot of the tactical work and filling out reports and stuff like that. And I've handed off a lot of things and it's definitely a transition that no one really, at least I haven't talked to anybody about yet. Um, I've worked with my boss obviously and asking questions on how to coach and how to be a manager and all that but it's a weird transition because I feel like I I have things I can work on there's a lot of a lot of areas of improvement where to start and also you know the feeling of oh no one's really telling me exactly what to do anymore versus now I can help the team build you know, new analyses or, you know, build things out and for the future um, to grow ourselves and yeah, help us stand out. I find it amazing. The more structure you have in your personal life, <laughs> the more freedom you end up having in your work life, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It sounds like what's happening. It sounds like what I have, what Matt has, what you have. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think that's so? I think um, maybe um, I don't necessarily have an answer. Actually, that's a good question. <laughs> I just thought, I mean, I don't know yeah. either. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Maybe it's a trade off. <laughs> like, you know, you have structure in one end and then the other end, you're like, oh, gosh, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I, um, I, I think but... ultimately when you have discipline, which is in, in a structure, you know, I think for number one, you're much more efficient. You're just, mm -hmm. you know, you know what you got to do. You know, it's almost like your value system. There's not any compromise there. There's it's like you said, I, I know that I have to get those, the, the bread baked or the, 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 I have to train for my, my cycling or whatever. Like uh, it's uncompromising. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it has to be done. You know, when we have those types of, of, of things in our life, the amount of, amount of time that frees up that allows us I think to do fun things and 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 take some chances and take some risks and mm -hmm. and do things outside of you know that that you know that that structured life that we also have um I think a lot of those things open up and when you have everything else your basics taken care of almost like your Maslow's hierarchy your you know your your basic needs taken care of and 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 you're getting those things done and 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 it's whether it's routine or not but you're disciplined at all your daily workout your eating habits your whatever mm -hmm. it might be what that opens up for your your other possibility that's been my experience anyway mm -hmm. and to your point earlier when i don't have when i have too much time and that's why college was just a killer in so many ways you've never you've never given any that much free time in your life again i mean people talk about how 
you know, yeah. oh, college, I'm always like, you know, these parents say their kids going off to college and how, you know, oh, I hope he or she does well. And I'm like, that kid's never going to have more free time. That, <laughs> yeah. that, if if he or she doesn't do well, that's probably a choice of some sort yeah. because yeah. it's not a lack of time. So, but when, when, when I have that free time, that's, you know, that's when I'm like, I'll get to it. I got plenty, you know, I'll, I'll get to it. And, I'm, pro- I'm procrastinating. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. You know, and then some days I look and I go, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through the day? And then, you know, I stop working at eight, nine o'clock, depending I, whenever I, whenever it ha- I have, I usually stop working when I'm done working. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't have this, oh, well, it's five o'clock. I'm now done. And whatever I didn't do, I'll get to tomorrow. I don't work like that. Right. I work, I work till it's done. And then I move on till tomorrow. But in, in, in any case, when I have a lot to do, boy, do I get a lot done because I'm just mm-hmm. boom, boom, boom on it. And and so yeah. when you said that earlier, I thought it, re- it resonated with me that, you know, that ability or that inability to be efficient when you have too much time. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to do. <laughs> so so let's let's pivot into this bread baking. Uh, <laughs> what? I mean, you do this. I don't. Know, is it a side hustle? Is it for money? Is it for fun? All the above. How how did this get started? Like I I don't know. Call me old school or old fashioned. I just don't know many young people that are like you know what I'm gonna bake some bread and sell it. <laughs> yeah. Um. It was more of like just something for fun. Um, Actually, I had tried. So I make sourdough bread. And I don't know if you guys know anything about sourdough bread, but it's like <laughs> it's living. A, yeah, it's it's alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had tried to make my own starter from scratch for like the longest time. I, I think I tried like three years in a row. I tried I tried once a year for three years because it is a seven day process. And then after that, I'm like, if it doesn't work out, I'm done. (laughs) I give up. (laughs) I'm like, I'm not going to start seven days all over again because you have to like feed it every day. And like, it's this whole process. But um, I tried something different every year, like, you know, different water, different flour, whatever. This year, I don't know what I did. I mean, well, I I got it right. (laughs) So I finally got it right. It's a secret. No, I, I share it. I actually have an Instagram page that I would post bread on. Yeah. No okay. way. Yeah. So, um, well, it, is it public? Yes. Yeah. So I actually. What's it called? It's called More Greens underscore please, and there's a okay. there's a story behind that name. I was gonna say name that's doesn't... obviously got a story behind it. Yeah, because the the name doesn't tie with the bread. Um. <laughs> But I'll, I'll finish on the bread and then I can go to the, the Instagram if that's interesting. But um, the bread, I, I had gotten it right in May of this year or May of 23. And I I just kept it going. I would make bread for my family all the time. Um, then I had some of my friends try it and friends and family were like, make me some. And so then I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just start selling it. And so... <laughs> I just have, it's more on the side. I have an LLC, but it's not enough income to be really, you know, paying taxes on. <laughs> it's more <laughs> just for fun. Um, and yeah, I, I think I have, I have two like really regular customers and it's great. It's, it's good. <laughs> I I just looked that page. It's pretty, you, you talk about the whole process now. Now, now, help me out. When you make this starter, do you always have some of it around, or do you have to start over with it? Like, how? What happens when you when you succeeded? Now what? Yeah, yeah. So I um, I made the starter, and you can use it the day you day after you feed it or whatever, or you can save it in the fridge, and like it'll go dormant for a couple for a couple weeks if you want. Um, say I'm say I go on vacation. I don't have to worry about the starter if I put it in the fridge. Um, there's a, it's like a whole different world, but I also dehydrated it so that I have like dehy- like pellets of it that I can just rehydrate if I somehow like lose all my starter. Um, so it's like an insurance policy on my starter, <laughs> but I, um, I, I actually sell my starter so that I can, I can ship it to people if I wanted. Um, 
I've, I've actually done that. Someone on my Instagram commented and they lived in North Carolina and they were like, can I have some starter? And I was like, sure. And she paid for the shipping and that was it. It was great. So now I have someone in North Carolina making bread with my starter and then some friends and family have tried it. Um, someone at work asked for it. So it, it's like I'm sharing a piece of my kitchen with people. So it's cool. It's like your DNA. I know. <laughs> I made it myself. <laughs> No, it's very cool. And then, yeah, my my Instagram name does not tie with the bread because I started that Instagram sophomore year of college when I was living in my sorority house, making like I, I was on a very healthy track. Like I still am pretty healthy, but I I was really into the details and like tracking my macros and all of these things and learning how to eat healthy in a sorority house. So I would like share that with people yeah, on you. my Yeah, share that with people. Um, I was really good friends with the chefs at our sorority house because they would be making all the food and I would ask them questions of like, oh, what oil did you cook it in? Or like, what would you make like tonight for dinner? Maybe I'll give them suggestions of like healthier options. And, and they loved it. And it was great. But um, yeah, it was more greens, please, because I was really focused on like eating a lot of greens and all that. But lots of things have shifted that I just kept the name because it was nostalgic and a lot of my friends and family that had followed me through the years were like, don't change it. Cause I wanted to change it to like more bread, please. Or something like <laughs> something along those lines that fit a little bit better, but yeah. <laughs> it's kind of neat though. You can tell by the energy in your voice. It's an exciting, fun hobby, mm -hmm. but you technically have the foundation or starter for a company. If you ever wanted to pursue it more, that that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had people, you know, it, it's hard because I've had someone like approach me and say, you know, we don't have any good bread around here. I will buy your equipment for you. I will, I will help you. <laughs> and I'm like, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot. I, I have to like sit on it for a little bit, but um, I, I would love to do it. And I've thought about it. I think I'm not ready for something like that right now. Um, it's it's tough. I haven't had like a real sit down with myself yet, but <laughs> I feel like I've thrown myself in other directions that, again, I I feel like I'm a jack of all trades that I it's sitting down and putting, I don't know, a storefront up or something is, it's a lot to me. And I guess I could ask Matt for help there. <laughs> <laughs> I know but, what he's going to tell you you're you're never going to be ready right Matt? right <laughs> you 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 you're never going to be ready that 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 said <laughs> that said i mean there's there's a lot to any starting your own business you but Paul's right that's exactly what i'd say you're there's never the right time there's just yeah. there just isn't that said you know you got to decide what you want out of your life and yeah. and and you know and what the trade offs are and 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 you know that would be a that would be a whole hour plus discussion on, on those types of things. I have those things conversations quite a bit with people, but yeah. um, you know, it is interesting to see your passion for it. And, and, and um, you know, that, that, that stands out. Let me put it that way. Thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I love the process. Um, hmm. I do love business too. And so I think, you know, putting those together would be great. Um, I've thought about it. I definitely could rope my sister into helping me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've, we've thought about like starting a business together, but, um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll see where it takes me. I'm just kind of riding the wave right now. So I, I'm totally with you on the, there's never a right time. I no, I but what, that too. <laughs> what, what is nice is if you can run the business grow the business while you're doing your job and while you're, you know, building yep. that career and see kind of, I mean, that's a, that's, that's the best of both worlds. Now comes at a trade off of course. Yep. Um, Cause everything does, but you know, that's, that's certainly when, when I'm talking to people, that's usually what I'm the advice, if that's possible within what they're trying to do, I'm like, Hey, mm -hmm. look, ride the fence on this thing and see where, you know, see where it could go. Now you're going to have to give up other things, you know, to do yep. that friends maybe family is, is seeing them as much whatever um you know sleep that that's on the list of <laughs> yeah. things to be given up um 
TV, that's gone. Um, but that's yeah, good that's anyway. You don't, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want that anyway. But, but no, it's, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I have my beliefs and I know what I, I always say to people, like, I know what's on the other side of the curtain mm -hmm. and the number of friends. I hang out with a lot of business people. That's where my interest is. A lot of my friends are. Yeah. And I've, I have the same conversations probably close to every day with people like that. And they all say the same thing. Oh, I would never go back. I would <laughs> once it's like, once you cross that yeah. line, there, there's just, there's just no going back to that employee world. But, mm -hmm. but that's, I'm sure there's other people would, would, would see it differently, but, um, but uh, you know, it's, it's nice to have dreams and goals and the ability to maybe pursue some of those things. And, and, and look, you may, you, you may fail too. God knows I have right. plenty, plenty. Yeah. but boy, what you get out of it is, is, um, is, is it's truly priceless, but that's cool. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Well, that's neat. You. And, you know, to piggyback on that, what what's exciting from my observation is with all we've talked about that you do, you seem generally happy with every aspect of what you're doing, career, bread, the cycling, you know, mm -hmm. family, friends. So there's nothing wrong with it. Like some people have dead end jobs, complain, whine all the time, Matt, you and I know a bunch of them. And then they have this idea and they're still afraid to jump forward with it. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you seem happy. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> right, right. I yeah. can't get inside your head. We're just having this conversation. So when you're in that good space, it's even better when you have these other choices, because if something went south, you, you could no doubt in my mind, you wouldn't just go with it. Now, maybe you'll go with yeah. it anyways, but I feel like so, sometimes I feel like the comfort zone or the, the happiness of everything you got going, it, it makes it harder to take that step. I, I know it has with me in the past, but nothing wrong yeah. with that either. So, right. Right. Yeah. That's, I think that's where I'm at right now. It's like, I'm comfortable whether or not I want to be comfortable. I try to challenge myself in other ways, whether again, whether it be my career or making more bread <laughs> or, you know, signing up for another race or something. I, I find ways to challenge myself because I, I can't stay stagnant. That's just not who I am. Um, yeah. So I, I don't care how much money another human being makes it a job, but I feel sorry for them when they have nothing outside of that. Like, mm -hmm. like you work and you go home. Like, I don't understand the meaning behind that where you have, you obviously have meaning in several aspects of your life. So if you feel like, you know, put more time in any of them, I, I think you will. And, and that's okay. kind of the, that's kind of the secret sauce, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we have meaning and having a purpose in life is, is, is kind of what it's all about. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, we talk about it quite a bit. It's not this, this idea that you're going to find happiness someday. And then for the rest of your life, you're going to be happy. It's just, you know, we're, we're told that's what's supposed to happen. It, 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 it doesn't, it's impossible. We're humans. We don't work like that, but you know, it's that, it's that meaning that, that, um, you know, Paul and I talk about all the time when I tell my, I have an, I have an older daughter as, as well, who's 24. And, and what I've been saying since she was young is, is I want you to pursue meaning in your life. I, I don't, I don't want you, you know, chasing happiness. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. fool's fool's errand. Uh, Cause you can't hold it. Um, but meaning, you know, you know, it's meaning when it's 5.00 AM and you're getting up on Saturday to, to do it, to put the bread in the oven or whatever, mm -hmm. however, however you do that or to, yeah, yeah. Or, or to train for that race or to, you know, when it's Friday at 10 o'clock and all your friends are out at the bars hanging out or whatever, and you're in working on your business plan or whatever, like that's when, you know, you're, you're in, into meaning. And, and um, those are, those are powerful times. Totally. Happiness is a choice. I think that's another thing. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's certainly right. How we look at our, yeah. I mean, here, here I am, what am I going to make of it? Right. Or, or how, how am I going to yeah. perceive, how am I going to perceive this? I mean, yeah. you know, it, it, it I, I, I can relate to that so much. You know, I mean, I remember when I got into my subway business thinking, oh man, what if I owned 
three someday. Wow. Can you imagine? And, you know, here, mm-hmm. here I'm at 34 and counting and it's like, then there's some days that you're just like, oh, you know, and I'm like, pillar four, our fourth pillar is called perspective. And mm-hmm. it's what you're just referring to. Your happiness is based on perspective of which you're kind of in charge of for the most part. Right. Yep. Yeah. Good point. Very yeah. good point. I got to end with two serious questions. Okay. Yep. Is there meaning behind the picture you sent me for your podcast cover? Cause I, th- I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Matt it's doesn't on, know what it is yet. So yeah, it's, it's actually the profile picture for my um, Instagram. Okay. So, and that was, it's just funny because I'm Italian and there's pizza in the picture. And the other picture I was actually going to send also had pizza in it. It wasn't on purpose. Like it truly right. just was like, there was another funny picture of me. <laughs> so <laughs> they both have pizza in it and it has to do with bread and yeah. <laughs> well, after, after the close to an hour we spent talking, it makes perfect sense now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, next Thursday, a week from Thursday. My wife and I were flying to Chicago for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yes, that's right. You guys are staying downtown. Yep. And w- apparently we're watching where they turn the river green. That's awesome. Yeah. Have you? Yep. You must have seen that in your life. I don't think I've ever been down there when they did it. See, it's tough because when you're a native, you don't experience it as much. So I've definitely gone down there when the parade happens, whether or not I've watched the parade. Probably not, but <laughs> um, I've seen the river green, but I've never seen it dyed green. Like when they do it, that's, that's really cool. I've seen videos. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's closing in on uh, one of my favorite cities. I'm a big Boston fan. Really? But, yeah. but, but I like, you know, if, if you're from around here and you watch the news, all you hear about Chicago every day, is shootings and murder. Yeah. And then when I go to Chicago, I don't see any of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like where anyone. where we go, the north yeah. side, obviously. I'm not saying that doesn't exist. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. I feel like that's what the news does to you, but that's <laughs> that's yeah, a I, different topic. I mean, yeah. yeah. Matt Matt knows. Matt travels all over. Like what you yeah. what's portrayed on the news is never really what you see when you travel somewhere. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll be I'll be downtown this weekend. Um, so I'll, I'll report back. <laughs> All right, please do. Well, Daniela, th- this was fabulous. Uh, you've got a great career. Uh, you're making bread literally in two aspects of life. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. <laughs> I, I've been waiting for, I've been waiting for that. All, that was all a good podcast. one. That yeah. was a good Allie one. will be proud of me for that one. <laughs> and, and I don't know, our four pillars are truth, meaning trade-offs and perspective. And we don't uh, we we use the words a little in the night, but boy, I I think you you represent all of them, and it's pretty Thank cool. You. I mean, I don't think I don't know where your life will take you, but I know it's going to take you in a direction that's your choice. I don't feel like you're you're ever going to mm. be doing something you don't want to do. So that's yeah. that's cool stuff. So awesome! I appreciate you guys having me on. This is a yeah. great conversation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, don't go anywhere when when we're done in a minute here. But yeah, no, you're good. Uh, Daniela, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. And it's great to get to talk to you more. Awesome. You too. All right. Take care. See ya. <laughs>